right, well, let's get into this. There's a standard start for the game, and basically each turn is a year, which sounds crazy because there's only five years, but each year has multiple card plays per side. So really almost it's as if each card play is a turn, sort of, kind of. But the bottom line is we start off with the uh, 1914 card. You can see that there's zero build points because you use build points to rebuy previous cards. Well, there are no previous cards, so that's why that's zero. However, you do get resource points. You can see both the allied and the central powers have resource points. And those have already, we take those numbers and place them on the tracks. Here's the central powers track. You can see the Germans are set at three, austria hungarians at two. We come down to the Allied players track, and we can see the Brits have one, French and Russians have two, one for the Serbs and one for the Belgians. Resource points are, it's kind of a neat mechanic. This is sort of your operational reserves. It's the points that are for emergency use, and they could be used in a variety of ways. The cards can only be used as they're written, but these resource points have multiple uses, and we'll go through those. First thing, though, is to start the... Um, game, the uh, Central Powers goes first, and they are required to start with the Schlieffen plan card by rule. The way cards work is that you don't have to do everything on the card, but what actions you do take on the cards have to be conducted in order. And this prevents World War II kind of blitzkrieg situations. <laughs> so what we do first is we do the special Schlieffen attack. After we get done with that, then we get to attack one other area. And then we get to play another card or pass the turn. So it's a pretty strong start for the uh, Central Powers. But we're going to start off here with a Schlieffen attack. And that is you roll two dice, and this is what we whack the Belgians with. If we get a three, we not only kill the infantry, but we also kill the fort. But there are other results possible. So we'll fire two dice, seven. And that is three bucks. Three Denimf. So that is the optimal start. We're going to kill one of those guys and put him off in the ocean and then we are going to find the units and we want a dead fort marker we'll pull that puppy out and put him on Liège so we knocked Liège out and we killed the infantry that was there now if we had only killed the two infantry points the fort would have got to shoot back on the one chart basically the zero to one column but the surprise attack took out everybody, so we are going to advance after combat into there. Had there been the fort left, we would have had an attack here, and I might have lost a German, but so be it. We're good. So, we move in. That's that. Next leaf and plan. Attack one other area. This attack gets one shift to the right. And I'm going to go with an attack down here in the uh, south, uh, Novi Sad, down to Belgrade. So I'm three bucks to two. I get an extra point for the card. He gets an extra point for the fort. So it's actually four to three. The way combat works is I'm rolling on the four chart and he's rolling on the three chart. So we both roll and inflict losses on each other. So austro hungarians say seven. Seven on the four chart is oh, just outside, two bucks. All right. So I wipe out Belgrade, but now he shoots back on the three chart. Snake eyes. As you look over on the combat results table, Justin... Infantry strength. The justice strength for him was three. He got nothing. That is an amazing start for me. So I'm going to advance after combat, and I'm in. Now, Belgrade is now besieged. Um, it will die automatically at the end of the year, unless I choose to attack it before then. So that was really good. That was my second attack. Now, due to the Schlieffen plan card, I get to play yet another card. So I'm going to smack Vilna with the Tannenberg card. Uh, Tannenberg card's pretty nasty, actually. Attack one area using an Emph, at least one German Emph, so I'll, no problem, I'm using all five. If this is against Russians, apply damage to the Russians before they roll. That's in later years, though. In this year, I just get one shift to the right. And then I get to do two moves. So that's not bad. So I am on the six chart, a five chart shifted up, and he's on the four chart because he has a fort. Let's come back down to the combat results table. I'm on the yummy six chart. Except I rolled like a Goomba. And that's a three on the six chart is a whopping two points. Great. 
All right, decrease, decrease. So I did two. He shoots back on the four chart. I'm probably gonna lose this battle. Does a six on the four chart. He does two to me. All right, so that was like really bad. However, it shows an interest. Uh, shows the uh, advance after combat does not occur because even though I'm three, he inflicted two losses on me, and I inflicted two losses on him. So, I'm no advance after combat is allowed. Now I get to move two areas for movement. I think number one is I got to run in. And I got to run into Brussels. Got to do it for my second movement. I think I'm going to, there's an entrenched infantry in Konigsberg. I'm actually going to move him up to Tannenberg. He just is absorbed into the already existing unit. And you'll notice that he was entrenched, but he loses the trench status because he moved out. Now you can move people out and they lose trench status, but if they move to another entrenched area, they would retain trench status. Or if you leave one guy in, new people that move in gain the trench status if someone already there is trenched. But in this case, I gave up the trench status because I wanted to make him a four. That is the Central Powers first card play. All right, so now it's time for the Allied players. I can't play in trench yet because it hasn't been the fourth card play. But I can mobilize, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. What does that do for us? I get to move one area, then I get to place three Russian imp in Russian cities, and then one French in Paris and a Commonwealth in London. All right, so in order, one move. Yeah, that's kind of a hard call. I think what my one move is going to be is I'm going to move Kiev up to Minsk. Then I get to place three. So that's my move. Now we go down to the placement. Three Russians, one French, one Commonwealth. All right, so the free Russians, Russia doesn't really have a capital per se. I mean, they do, but it's way the hell back here in Moscow. But these three red cities count as the Russian capital altogether. So we can place in any one of these three red cities the three points. So two of the points are going to go here. Now, since this dude is starts entrenched, the new guys also are entrenched. So that's two of them, and I get one more buck. And the only place I can put it is down there. Russian dude. Stick him there. All right. Then I get to place one French. Well, the French is going to go in Paris, so increases Paris. And I get a Commonwealth dude. Not a BEF, a standard one. There we go. We'll get to the BEF later. And he goes there. All right, so that's not all that difficult, right? So now uh, card play alternates their actions until uh, everybody's out of out of gas. So we're back to the central powers, and I think they will play another card. Um, so mobilization, activate one area for movement. All right. I am going to take this five that's in Frankfurt, and I'm going to move him. And this will illustrate an interesting point. I can move two of those guys down to here. And I can move two of them down to here. So now, I, now I'm fives across. And then this guy gets smoked down to a one. The point being is that with one movement action, I split off two infantry, put them there, and I split off two infantry and put them there. And for what it's worth, I'm going to move the last guy down to Freeburg here. Why not? So one move, boom, boom, boom. Pretty slick. Now I get to put two AH infantry in Budapest. And I get to, what else do I get to do? Oh yeah, four Germans. Now, here you have a choice. Berlin or Essen. Now, since I actually won this fight pretty handily, I'm going to place one of these dudes in Essen. But I'm going to put the other three in Berlin. 
which brings them up to a total of four. So, I mean, I could have put two and two, I could have put four and zero, but I chose to do it this way. So I have a little backup in the, in the West and then this mm -hmm. guy's ready to go marching off to uh, Russia. Having done all that, it's, I pass the turn. I think they are going to probably artillery builds. Now artillery builds, they get to attack one area, then do one move. And one artillery in Paris, Kiev, or London. So to attack an area, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack Rivne to Chernovitz. Now this is going to, I'm going to do this with attrition combat just to show you how that works. But also it's, it's kind of a good call. And I'll explain why. Chernovitz is the two banger, but he's, the mountains give him a buck. Or actually the mountains decrease me by one. I'm sorry. He's still on the two chart. But because I'm attacking into the mountains, I go from a three. I go to a three down to a two for attack purposes. Well, that two to two kind of sucks. And he's in the mountains and I'm not going to push him out of there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do attrition combat. The way that works is I just automatically lose a point and then I roll a die. As long as it isn't a one, he loses a point also. So it's just attrition warfare at its very finest. I rolled a five. So that worked. So he goes down to a one from a two. So that there's your example of attrition combat because regular combat just didn't make sense in that area and I kind of want to put pressure on him down there. So now I place my art in London, Paris, or Kiev and then I pass the turn. Well, I'm going to put it in Paris. And artillery, these are actually just markers. They represent stockpiles of artillery. They don't really represent the tubes. The tubes are ubiquitous across the front at this scale, but... This is basically an extra stockpile of, of Artie, and when we use it, it's expended, whether or not it was successful. Most of the time, it is successful, sometimes not. So I did all that, and uh, I get to pass the turn. And I did it this way, too, by the way, is I want to build this guy up and then move him. I don't want to move that three out and then have to move the single artillery again. This way, I can move them together with a single move action, if that makes sense. So you want to be efficient with your moves. So now it is the Central Power's fourth card play because they played two in a row with the Schlieffen and Tannenberg and then they played the card last turn when the mobilized. So now it's their fourth card play. So now they are allowed to play Entrench and they will. In, entrench, in 1914, you can't Entrench until the fourth card play for your side. So... Allies can't even do it next time. It's only their third action next time. So what do I do? Flip two guys. That's it. And then pass. So I am going to entrench these guys. And that's achieved simply by flipping them. So here it says entrench, but then when you have your actual game, you see the little pick and shovel symbol. It's a little hard to see, but you pick up on it pretty quick especially if you're zoomed in. Uh, so, and we'll zoom in just to show him. And you can see that he's entrenched here. Oops, put him back. All right, so that was one entrench. Uh, for my second entrenchment, I'm going to entrench... I should have beefed this guy up. Oops, well, you know what? I'll fix that by entrenching him. All right, so... He'll be basically almost impossible to remove at this point. So now it is the third play for the allies. What are the allies going to do? I think they're going to attack one area, one area for a moment, and then they get to place two infantry in areas connecting to Paris. So we'll play that card. This is a neat card. Usually I try to save this for crisis situations. Attack one area, activate one area for a moment. Well, my attack is going to be, once again, I'm going to do an attrition attack <laughs> because he's only got one guy. I, he's entrenched, so he ignores the first damage point on a normal attack. But I'm doing an attrition attack. So I go down to one automatically, and he vaporizes, assuming I don't roll a one. And I rolled a two. Yay, go team. All right, so this guy dies. And he is out of there. Now, the thing about attrition attacks, though, is no 
advance after combat is permitted. That's all you do, even if you're victorious. So bottom line is I can't advance after combat, but I did it because it was impossible to kill an entrenched point in the mountains with just two bucks that I had. So that was a that was successful, I'd say. Now I get to activate one area for movement. Well, I'm just going to move. Yeah, I'll do it this way. I'll activate Minsk. Two of the points will go up to Vilna. So basically that turns him into a three. And the other point goes over to Bialystok, which makes him a three. So he he did with a single move, he split and went both directions. So there there we go. Now I get to place two infantry in up to two locations total. If they if they already have at least one infantry in areas that are can connect to Paris, so I'm going to pump this dude up to a four. That's one of my two points, and the other one I'm going to pump this guy up because I'm not too happy with him being strong down there. All right, so that evens that out, and I pass the turn. All right, back to the central powers. I'm going to place. I'm going to use this card. Activate two areas for a moment. Counterfire. So this is kind of a neat card. We're going to play it. And Counterfire is a card that sits on the table. So basically it, it stays on the table. Just find a convenient spot to place it. That's not in the way of anything. And I can use this to stop. I may discard this after AP player uses uh, an arty or a heavy arty before it can be used. So that's pretty cool. But mainly I did it for the two moves. I'm going to move Budapest is going to go 1-2 up to Chernovitz because I don't want to rake a giant hole in my line. And my other move is going to be Berlin is going to crank on up to Tannenberg 1-2. So there we go. Oh, I play. It's my fourth play on the Allied side, so I play an entrenchment. And I am going to entrench Vilna because that's just annoying. And this is sad, but I'm probably going to entrench here just so I don't. <laughs> that, again, the, the mountains don't help him coming out. So he's just a two, but I'm a one. But I ignore the first loss. He'd have to roll uh, eight or higher to wipe me out. So I'll, it's a risk, whatever. All right, so I did my entrench. Back to the... Central powers. Uh, I guess I'll do army reserves. So with army reserves, we attack one area, then one area for movement, and then we put two infantry down. Uh, so I'm going to attack... Oh, I hate to do that. Yep, got to be done. All right, four to four, but he's entrenched. There's my attack. I'm on the four chart, he's on the four chart. So this is a good example of how entrenched combat works. I will roll for the Germans. A big whopping four. Four on the four chart, I do two hits. However, because he is entrenched, he only takes one hit because he disregards the first hit. So he was a three plus a one. So he's on the four chart. He's rolling two dice. Seven, a little more average. He does two points back. And the thing about entrenchments, too, let's just say I had done three points to him, which is decreased to two, and he had only done one to me. In a normal battle, I would be able to advance after combat. But in a trench situation, as long as there's one point left, not including the fort, one point left, you can stay. But I, I couldn't even advance because he did more to me than I did to him. Last part of the card is place two infantry on locations that currently have at least one. And I'm going to pump him back up to a four, basically with reserves. Pass the turn. Okay, back to the allies. Two areas for movement. Yeah, heavy artillery build sounds good. What does that do for us? Two areas for movement and then place a heavy arty in Paris. Well, I'm going to move one infantry point down to Vilna to beef him back up. So basically, they just sort of swap places. The net result. So one, one point shifted down there. So that's one move. For my second move, I'm going to... Well, this is just... 
heading south in a handbasket here in Russia. <laughs> I guess I'll have to entrench him just to be annoying. Okay, more trenches. Yay. Second part of the card, place a heavy arty in Paris. And I don't know how to, I don't see it. Do I flip this? Yes. So that's not legal. Okay, so my one of my two moves, I have to move these guys up. Because it's not legal to have two arty in the same area. So that means I have to undo this. Basically. I mean, I could do it the original way, but then I wouldn't be able to place the heavy arty and it'd be lost, so I threw that. All right, pass the turn. Now uh, we're back to the central powers. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna expend a oh man, I really ought to attack this guy. Well it's just a two though. See <laughs> you will agonize over some of these plays. You know what I'm not. I'm just gonna expend so I went on central powers. I'm gonna expend one of their resource points, go down to two, and pump him up. Now, I had three resource points. I could have, like, for example, taken this one guy here, banger here, and turned him into a four. But what you can't do with resource points is I couldn't spend resource points and put one here, one here, and one there. You can only pump one dude. How much you pump them is a different decision. All right. So that counts as a card play, spending that one resource point. This will be a good, uh, I'll show you. I'm going to spend a French resource point. But I'm going to use it. Flip it to the attack has been used. I'm going to use it to attack. So I am going to attack Brussels. This is not necessarily brilliant because, uh, uh, well, you'll see. All right, I'm firing the artillery. Normally, that's a uh, die roll to see if I kill a, a German. This in the artillery phase, but the Central Powers player is going to counterfire. So basically, I discard my counterfire card, and this artillery is just deleted, gone. All right, so now we're down to four to five, but he's entrenched. So I got to roll a good dice here. So four French. Seven. Sounds like a awesome two hits. Unfortunately, he's entrenched, so he only takes one hit. Now, he's on the five chart shooting back at me. Five table, and, uh, well, he did two. So, I am not entrenched. Well, trenches don't help you anyway when you're attacking. So, I actually take both. He did more to me than I did to him, so he does not have to retreat. I just want to show you how expending the card, you know, this card sits on the table mechanic, how that works. But I got to get it off the table anyway, so now I can use my heavy arty next time I do an attack. Back to the central powers. They have one card left. Attack one area, one area for movement, and put an arty somewhere. I'm going to play this card. So I am going to attack Vilna now with my five at this point to two entrenched. So let's process that. Five chart. I rolled a six. Three hits. That does two. So that actually wipes him out. And he's shooting back on the three chart because he still has the fort. But I did, in fact, wipe him out. But he had two because the three losses went down to two losses, but that's all he had. So he shoots back on the three and that is a nine, and I take two losses. Now, we actually did equal losses to each other, but he has no one there except the empty fort, so I'm going in. Then I get to activate one area for movement. Now, this would be pretty dangerous because he's got these guys in Bialystok, but because I had the move, I can backfill, and now my last action of the mm -hmm. card, I did the attack, I did the move, now I get to place an RD Berlin. I'm going to send this sucker to the east. I'm, I'm playing the strictly defensive in the west kind of game here, which I've seen people go balls out <laughs> in France, too. That's, that is a technique. And, and, I mean, I've seen France pushed back pretty far to their alternate capital of Nantes. 
I start off early by trying the, um, you know, I'm, I'm pushing hard in Russia, so I'm going to stick with that program. All right, so that's the end of that card, this card. One thing in this game, uh, tactically, you, you really need to respond to the, your enemy if they're successful. So I need to spend my Russian, one of my Russian points. And you can see we used a resource point, used one for an attack. We've used them to beef people up. I'm spending a resource point, gives me a move, a single move. And so there it is. So now it's back to the central powers. I just didn't want to leave Minsk open for free. So back to Central Bowers. They have no cards. But their turn is not over yet because they have two German resources and two Austro-Hungarians. And I'm going to spend one Austro-Hungarian point and pump him to a two. And I'm doing that because Italy's coming in next year. So I don't want to leave Trento at, at a one. That would be... A, that's a little maybe bad. So I'm kind of prepping in advance there. Back to the allies. I'm going to spend my last Russian point. Maybe this is crazy, but for another move. And I'm going to... Oh, he lost trench status when he moved out of Bialystok. But I'm going to use that. So really he should have... He should have been like this, moving into Minsk. I'm sorry. So he was entrenched in Bialystok. He moved to Minsk. He lost his trench. But now I'm spending a buck for a movement action, and that movement action is going to be to entrench him. So there we go. That's that whole point. Back to the Central Powers. I'm going to spend my last Central Powers point and pump this guy back up to full strength three. Made him a three because uh, that threatens Rivni pretty good. So now it's back to the allies. Okay, so now I think I can safely spend my Belgian point and place a Belgian in Antwerp. Now normally you can't place bodies on the map unless there's somebody already there. In other words, there's two, I can place a spend a point, put a French, pump him to a three. This four in Brussels, I could pump him to a five if I had a German point. But you can build people fresh with resource points on capital cities. Well, a capital Brussels has been taken. However, by rule, I can put this guy down in Antwerp. So that's sort of like, if Brussels is gone, I can still spend it and put him there. So that's what I'm going to do. He's got to be dealt with eventually. So it's back to the central powers. Well, they have two German points left. I'll spend one of them. I'm looking pretty good on the Western Front. I'm thinking my one last point is going to move this artillery up to Tannenberg from Berlin. All right, so get him in for eventual use. Down to one German, back down to the French. Well, we got a lot. Ah. Uh, Serbians. One point. Now, the Serbians, as big as they get, is two. So I can't beef this guy up. And the capital's been taken, but... And I'll, I'll use it in... So my Serbian point, I used it to entrench this guy. Instead of putting the new body in them. Maybe that's a mistake, but I like that. Back to the central powers. Well, they're down to their last huzzah, and they either pass the turn and do nothing or they use it, which actually I could do so I could react. So you know what? I will. I'm going to pass with the central powers without having taken an action. Now, if the allied players also pass, the turn's over. If both players pass without having either played a card or done an action. Uh, but... That would be stupid for the allies because they still got two bucks to go. So I'm going to spend one of them. To beef up my, my Brits in London. Back to the Germans. I could pass again. I'll spend the one point and beef him back up to a five. All right. So central powers have no cards and no resource points. They are done. So now we're going to come down to uh, the Allies. They still have a French point. Their attack's been used. So 
they can spend this to move somebody or to beef somebody up, but they can no longer, you, you can only attack once with resource points a year. One move, what do I do? No, the heck with that, I'm gonna beef this guy up to a three. It's a dumb attack. All right, so now I have spent all of my allied resource points. So I pass, he has to pass, I pass, year's over. Actually, technically not. The year technically isn't over if I don't want it to be because I still have this card, Miracle of Marn, but I'm going to sandbag this. So I'm going to keep this. And so I don't have to rebuy it. It's Well, you can't rebuy it anyway. It's a one-time use. Hence the cost of a asterisk. But the point is, is that I can keep it in hand and that just makes my hand bigger next year. And there is a, a strategy to um, kind of waiting the other guy out. You know, instead of spending your resource points like three at once to make a one up to a four, just spend them one at a time and drag it out. If you got more cards than the other guy and more resources, then what will happen is at the end of the year, you might get two moves in a row, which is can be devastating. Or certainly bad. So you don't want to run out of actions and cards, that's for sure. So before I uh, shift to the end of the year actions, any questions at this point? Any uh, Greg, can you hear me? This is Rich. Yeah, Rich. Hi. Hey, how you doing? I was just, I haven't had a chance to even open this up yet or even read through the rules, but I right. did jump to the uh, the back of the book or pretty much the back of the rules for the solo play. Now, I've just watched you solo play both sides and that, I mean, that was pretty easy. Are the solo play rules... Uh, comparable to the Pacific Tide solo play yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, the bot for Imperial Tide shares a lot of DNA with the previous bot. Yes, yeah, so very similar. You've got personalities. You've got priority on card play, that sort of thing, and then generic overall year objectives. Like you should be trying to do this, or you should be trying to do that. But to be perfectly honest, between us, right in here, right now. I think it solos perfectly fine without the bot. I have gotten to the point, I just don't bother with the bot anymore. I, I felt the same way about Pacific Tide. I oh, love that You got game. to the point where you soloed it just fine without the bot, yeah. Yeah. The points, yes, there is a bot. Yes, it's similar to Pacific Tides. and But I would argue that after a couple plays, you, you're probably better off doing it again, you know, playing yourself without the bot. But, but it's there. Some people are going to really like it. I imagine some people will dislike it, but That's I was actually goes. pleasantly surprised. People really liked the bot in Pacific Tide. I, I think I got 10 positive comments to every negative comment on that. So I was like, yeah, I guess I got it pretty close to right anyway. But yes, so that hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it does. That's good. Thanks. And, and really the mechanics, the mechanics are not that difficult at all in this game. But there is a lot of strategy, like when would it be good if you have an attack, you don't want to waste it. Look around for some place where you can do one of those super annoying attrition attacks. <laughs> and they backfire every once in a while. You know, you, the, the normal result of both sides take a buck, but sometimes it'll fail and you end up losing people, which and that's very World War One, and the defenders just machine gun you down and laugh. And that's all there was to it. There's a lot of strategy and also card sequencing. But you definitely need to react to what the other guy's doing. Just real quick here, I'll go ahead and change the year. Okay, both sides have nine build points. And then that is used to buy cards. The other thing you can do, however, you can shift one of, the, one of your build points and pump somebody's resource level by one. So I'll show you how that works here. Central powers get three, two, one, and one. So we get three Germans, two AH, one and one. I can go down to just eight build points for the central powers, and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to pump the Turks up to two resource points. Because I have a feeling that Gallipoli is going to happen. So. If you're wanting a stronger push in Russia, you might want to go with the Germans or, you know, depending on the situation, who you, you don't, this is not required, but it is an option for you to spend one of your card points and pump up a resource point. But you can only do it once. I'm, you know, one point is the max you can spend in that way if you choose to do so. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Allies have 
two, two, one, one, and three. So we have two French, two British, three Russians, which is annoying. One Italian. I think I get a Serb. Yeah, I do. One Serb, two Commonwealth, two French, one Italian, three Russians. All right, so now my points are set up, but I, I won't spend a point for them. So I have nine Allied build points and eight Central Powers build points because I spent one over here. Well, technically right there. All right, so having done that, now you have to rebuy your cards. So we look at the Central Powers discard pile. I have, uh, I'm down to eight bucks. And the reason I did that is counterfire is zero. So I'm purchasing it. And mobilization bodies are good. So I'm going to purchase that one for three. Purchase army reserves for three. That's six. And my last two points, Tannenberg is godlike against the Russians, so I'm going to rebuy Tannenberg. So that, I spent eight points, three, three, and two. I also bought the other card because it cost zero, so you rebought that for free. Schlieffen's out of the game. Entrench, eh, I'm on the offensive, so I didn't want to spend that. I thought that the resource point would be better than, than spending another buck on Entrench again. And then I couldn't afford artillery. So that's that's all the cards I bought. For the um, allies, and I don't know why I don't have all the rest of my allied cards. So for the allies, they have nine points. And I'm going to spend, basically I rebuy the whole shoot match. That's three. Six, seven, and I got two more points. Now, so I got a choice here. Do I buy heavy or arty? This gives me another attack. This gives me the better artillery, but it also gives me an extra movement. So I'm going to take this one because I think I need to be more on the defensive yet. It's only 1915, so I'm going to buy this card. So I spent my nine points. So this card is still in the discard pile. All right, so each side bought their hands. Now, we also get, if we look at the uh, hand, we get the New Year's cards for free. So the way that works is you, you get the larger of the two. So let's say you have seven cards. It would be, you shuffle them up, you get one one is with four cards, and the other one is with three cards. So you would use the hand with four cards. That's the first half of the year. Then, when you get down to just one card left, you get to pick up the other half of your year, the other part of your hand. So you don't necessarily know which of your cards you're going to get to start off the first half of the second year. That was the first full year. But basically, the rest of the years are the same. You, you follow the current year. You know, it's sort of a recipe. It tells you how many points you have to rebuild, how many resources you get, and then you just set up. Then you take all of your cards that you bought, add them to the cards you get for free, which would be, in this case, 1915's cards, all of them. Shuffle them, cut them in half, split into two decks, and then you uh, start playing the second year. Now, also another thing to notice, each year, who gets to play first is designated. It's just like Pacific Tide and Central Powers again. As the years advance, eventually switches over the last two, 1917 and 1918, the Allies go first. So the Central Powers go first up until 1916. That's one thing we forgot to do. At the end of the year, check for supply. If you're cut out of supply during the turn, you just can't move. You defend normally. You can't attack, you can't move. If the year ends and you're out of supply, you're dead. So is anybody out of supply? No. However, we did wipe out a couple forts here. So this fort dies at the end of the year. Belgrade dies. And Belgrade is destroyed because the year ended and I was parked on top of it. So if you got at least one point parked on top of the fort, when the year comes to an end, it, the fort's destroyed, considered destroyed. Enemy fort. And that's about how it works. Any other questions?
Hey, Greg, is a C move basically just moving a unit from port to port? Yes, although you're allowed to move somebody from Paris. It's considered they they just sort of float down to the, it's close enough. But basically, yes, it's port to port. It's allied player only. And Gallipoli counts, as you see, as a port. Uh, Lanica. I've actually seen people see move into Rome, but it's only once a year. And you have to use a British resource point to activate that. So if you don't have any British resource points left, you know, obviously we have two at the moment. That's what that does. So you use a British resource point and you can move a Brit or a French from a port to a port. And that's a once a year thing, hence the marker, which I, I have to say, I have to click on it and say it's been used. Okay. So, and that's a once a year thing because it's a significant effort to hump all those folks down to the med from Europe, obviously. And there's only, there is a limit to the sea capability because some of it's got to be used for uh, supplies and what have you, logistics. So that's the limit on that. It's just one a turn. I'll, yeah, once per year. The other uh, issue there, let's just say we do that. Let's just say, let's just play Gallipoli here. So if I play the Gallipoli card, I get two Brits down here in Gallipoli. I can't reinforce Gallipoli with resource points or Salonica for that matter. I have to use a C-move to bring extra bodies down around there because otherwise you would just Salonica, you park two, you get two French Salonica and then you spend two French resource points and he's a four. And that's like logistically not realistic for starts. And um, it's just not balanced. So you have a limited capability to reinforce Gallipoli and Salonica once they occur. And hopefully that makes good sense to you all. Build point loss, people were asking me if you haven't gotten past the first year, what, what's this all about? And you could actually fry the guys next year's build points downwards with things like blockade and U-boats, blah, 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 blah. So there's cards that affect both sides as build points. So if you want to play the economic warfare part of the game, you can do that. Those cards have options, though. You can either like a lot of, a lot of times it's uh, do this or do that. Uh, Zeppelins, I think, is to uh, kills a British resource point. So there's several cards that do that. And now I'm about tapped out, Mo, unless you uh, not sure if there's any any last questions. But hopefully it was informative. I think you saw pretty much all the pretty much all the mechanics. I mean, we we killed a fort at the end of the year. Uh, we killed one in combat, actually, uh, Liège. You know, pump people up with resources. Used resources do to do an attack. I used some resources to move people. So the your resources are really is your Swiss Army knife. It's your flexibility. The cards, you have to do exactly what they say in order. And again, if you don't have an attack that you want to make, you could still play a card with an attack on it. But that's because you'll, you may want to, you know, you, the, the card may have two moves on it. And you really need to do two moves badly. So you can play the card. You can just skip over the attack part and not do it and then do the two moves. But again, you... You can do any or all of the actions, but you have to do them in order. Greg, it looks like you can play this game probably in maybe two or three hours. Is that about right? Oh, yeah. The caveat there is how uh, agonized your opponent is on his card play. (laughs) Well, you saw me, you know, I mean, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. And then I was like, oh, wait, I forgot. I got to move this guy over here to Minsk. So I changed my mind. You know, we played at the convention several games of this, had a blast. Came down to the wire, actually, one uh, one game. It was, it was pretty neat. I think we did it in like three and a half hours. But again, a lot of thinking, a lot of decision making, what have you. But I think two experienced players could probably crank this out in two and a half hours, probably. It's definitely a one evening game. I'll say one more thing. For example, I could have attacked, say, with my Brits, the Brussels, before he entrenched. And I could have used the Miracle of the Marne card, which would have, if I had inflicted one loss and they were not entrenched, they they have to retreat. So that's kind of your kick them back before the in, in, entrench in 1914 card. But I figured I'd save it for the future, you know. Obviously, there's some really key decisions. We want to talk a little tactics. The really key decisions in my mind is, you know, obviously, what you rebuy is huge. There's times to do attrition attacks, especially in Italy. You also have to use those cards that, like, for example, if there's a card, if I have a card that has an attack and then a move, I can like attack you, let's just say up here, I can attack. And then after the attack's over, I'm, I'm chopped down to like one buck or whatever. And then I can move people up. So you can move, make the move to reinforce the guys that just got decimated in the attack. And that's kind of a neat tactic with attrition warfare. Let's just say I attrition this guy here. 
which is a good call because he's freaking in Italy. So I, I would I would attrition him. And then I could, after the attrition, I do the move and I pump my guy back up. And now it's your turn. So I did an attrition. We both lost one. And then with my movement action, I move more bodies up. Well, now you're screwed unless you spend a resource to rebuild him or move somebody in. You can sometimes with attrition attacks kind of force your opponent to dance to your tune, if that makes sense. That's about it. I don't, I, unless there's any more questions, I, like I said, Mo, I think I'm kind of tapped out, but I, it's, it's really not that difficult a game to play. The mechanics are really straightforward. You get, both people shoot on the CRT. You take losses. If you inflict more, you get to advance after combat unless the guy's entrenched. Uh, if he's entrenched, he takes one less hit. It, it's all really easy as far as all that's concerned, but there are a lot of, well, I'd say little tricks, you know, like the beating people down with the attrition attacks kind of thing. That's, that's always nasty. The key to Russian, I'm not I'm going to kind of call it success. I'm going to call it survival. <laughs> the key to Russian survival is entrench, 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 and keep the cities maxed out. And what will typically happen is the Germans will beat you down to a buck because you're entrenched, and then you build yourself back up the very next turn. Don't let that go unanswered with the Russians. you got to keep rebuilding the Russians in their entrenched cities so you don't lose them for free. Of course, Tannenberg's pretty brutal. I mean, normally Russia's on the ropes in, in 1916 and definitely in 1917 if they haven't already been knocked out. With a little bit of luck, you can usually knock out the Russians at the end of 1916 or the start of 17. And of course, that frees up tons of Germans to go back to the West. There's other problems. You get the you get Salonika, you get Gallipoli going on. Sometimes Belgrade doesn't even fall in the first year. <laughs> if you roll bad and they roll good and, and he gets a chance to entrench in Belgrade, then then you're going to have problems. And that's a victory point. That's the other thing. You'll notice all these red cities, red areas. Those are victory point areas. Brussels is basically they're all the capital cities. Brussels is the one. Now, you'll notice the Russia's got three red cities, but all three of them are treated as one unit. So it's only one victory point if you take all three. But all these other cities are victory point cities. Typically, they're always capitals, uh, except for Essen and Frankfurt. But other than that, they're capital cities. So, you know, Belgrade is a capital, so it's a victory point right off the bat. So it is important to take that, obviously. Mo, it's yep. been a pleasure. Well, thanks a lot, Greg. I really appreciate um, it. Are there any last questions? This is the last call for questions. Yeah, I got one more. Oh, I was just looking at London. It's a capital, or it's a victory point city, but the Germans can't use port transport, right? Yeah, you can't. You can't take it. You can't take it. It's it's red for the purposes of being consistent, I guess. Okay. The, the thing is, is that the the victory point it's based on cities you start with versus cities that are that you've lost so in other words it doesn't hurt the central powers that they can't ever take london that's kind of immaterial but what 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 counts is they take belgrade now they're up a point they take Bel brussels now they're up two points so it's capital cities that you have taken that didn't start on your side that's where victory points are and it's a plus minus so Basically, the game starts off, uh, the Allies get actually get one notional city point. So the Allies start by winning the game. <laughs> They're up one. So in this case, uh, where we ended at, the, uh, the Central Powers has Belgrade and the Central Powers has Brussels. So they have two. The victory point score at this ending point is plus one for the Central Powers because they got two capital cities that they didn't start with, uh, or two red areas, shall we say. Even though they start off a point in the hole, uh, plus two, minus one, so they're one point to the good. Uh, you knock out Russia, that's another point. And, of course, it's pretty hard to take Paris, to be honest. But Frankfurt and Essen are pretty close to the front here. And in 1917, 1918, the Americans show up with a vengeance, and, and the Allies get tanks. And so this becomes ugly here, actually. The other thing that's tricky, though, is down here at Constantinople is a buck. It's a victory point. And if you don't respond to Salonika, you know, if you allow the Brits to just hang out and then build up stronger to the after. Uh, and if they rebuy the Gallipoli point, that's another strength point they can bring in to Salonika. So this could become problematic because it's just right there. And the other problem is these miners. Uh, Bucharest is 
is, is an allied victory point. Well, it can get lost real easy because it's right next door to Bulgaria. Sofia is right <laughs> next door to Salonika and, and the Serbs. So uh, this becomes kind of a, a, a high tension area in the Balkans towards the end of the game because there's a lot of victory points right here, four of them. And there's, you know, doesn't take much to get to them. Obviously, Essen and Frankfurt are a little more problematic, but that's because there's so many Germans. But with the tanks and the and the Americans showing up, the Allies can definitely push you in 19, late 17 and early 1918. Yeah, L London is immaterial. We kind of just made it red because it was a capital. And to be consistent, to be honest, uh, bottom line. So I, I think we've got all the questions covered. Rich, did you have any last questions here? You You seem to be the one with the most questions so far. No, I'm going to leave you alone. No, no I've that's what this, this is for. <laughs> I've enjoyed this. This was good. I can't wait to open it up right. and give it a shot. Cool.